Okay, 12 matches into Euro 2024. Here's my takeouts. Um, firstly, we're going to start with goals per game uh, because uh, I did have a feeling it was up. So that's why I did that video on goals per game average from 92 until now. It's still higher than the highest goals per game average between 1992 and 2020. Now, the 2020 tournament, which was played in 2021, the goals per game average peaked at 2.78, which is the highest goals per game average uh, that we've ever seen since 1992 at the Euros. The lowest was in 96 at 2.06. The current goals per game average after the first 12 games is sitting at 2.83. Now, it has dropped below three goals per game. There were some one goal games that we had which did impact the goals per game average however in saying that at one point it was sitting as high as four goals per game so uh yes it is a smaller sample size than a full tournament but goal scoring is seemingly still up and with the way the group stage has gone so far with no goalless draws which leads me on to my second point and only one game which has turned out to be a draw as a final result you can see teams are going for the win and going hell for leather against each other yes yes speed of play intensity uh, no one's really wanting to play for a draw teams are actually going for it hammer and tongs so therefore goal scoring is up Momentum swings in games have been fantastic. There's been only a handful of games that have been truly very one-sided. Uh, like Romania, their win, for example, the goal scoring ended up being a bit one-sided. Obviously, Germany-Scotland was a massively one-sided game. But for the most part, um, both both sets of teams have gone for it. There's been a handful of one-goal games, uh, three in total. But for the most part, only th yeah, so three of the games have have been one goal games but five matches have had three goals in them and eight matches in total have had three or more goals in them so goal scoring is definitely up definitely now we've had a couple of four goal games in there as well but the most common res result will have a 2-1 or a 3-0 uh, so we're seeing goals flying in and that's obviously impacted the goals per game average. Uh, the amount of goals from outside the box as well. Uh, we've seen some pile drivers the last few days, some real crackers from distance. Uh, the, the Turkey game, Romania game, for example, uh, the Portugal game, goals flying in from long range. Fantastic to see. I'm not going to lie, fantastic to see um, goal, what I call goals of the tournament contenders. We've seen a fair few of them already. Um, I don't know how, I'll have to have a look and, and re-watch all the highlights, but there's definitely been a, 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 an instance of a, a fair proportion of the goals scored have been from outside the box, which is fantastic, uh, which also leads me to look at some, some of the, the goalkeeping standards. There's been some shaky goalkeeping so far as well. Uh, fixing to that speed of play, um, definitely leading to more space, leading to more opportunities. And then the age of some of the squads as well. Uh, some of these squads are very youthful in comparison to what you would normally expect at an international tournament. We've got the youngest Italian squad for decades. Uh, we've got a very young England squad, uh, for example, a very young German squad. There are There's a 16-year-old there's a playing for Spain. So there are some very young, talented players um, playing Speed of play, space, goal scoring being up. It's been very entertaining, very entertaining so far. Uh, I want to quickly move to the weather conditions because uh, at the start of the tournament, it was very, very hot in the 30 degrees Celsius to mid 30s uh, Celsius range. The last few days, thunderstorms. Uh, the weather conditions have been very, very changeable. There was some concern that the Turkey-Georgia match in Dortmund might get cooled off because of the amount of rain that fell in a two-hour period. It chucked it down. Thankfully, they got the game played. First half, it stopped raining. The pitch held up well. Second half, it started chucking down again. So weather conditions can have a massive, massive part to play uh, in, in, in the games. They've been, it's been very hot, very humid, which could also be leading to fatigue and space. Yes, and mistakes. So we haven't seen uh, enforced water breaks as of yet um, because we haven't had that much intense heat as in... Uh, where it's been above 30 degrees uh, for an entire game. However, however, there is uh, meant to be some very warm weather coming across Europe in the next week, week and a half, two week period. So we are expecting a, a spike in temperatures. We may see water breaks. But at the moment, I think the humidity uh, and, and just the closeness of the air, which leads into the atmosphere, is having an impact on the games as well, leading to more space, more, more mistakes player fitness is being tested uh the crowds and atmosphere i want to finish with this fantastic 
absolutely fantastic atmospheres so far. Crowd crowds have been fantastic. The fan zones have been well patronized uh, patronized by by fans as well. And city centres across Germany, when you look at the news footage, um, a lot of colour, a lot of fans from different countries. The fan humour with the, what we call the food wars, yes, because the Albanians snapping the pasta, uh, you know, the baguettes being snapped. There's been there's been some humour around national dishes as well. So there's been a lot of a good natured fun between sets of fans. There has unfortunately been some disorder, as expected, uh, but nowhere near on the levels that was feared. Uh, I think the police will be quite happy with that. The security forces in Germany will be quite happy uh, with that. Uh, the, as I say, the, the, the crowds have been really good. The atmospheres have been fantastic. They've chosen the stadiums really well that really keep the atmosphere in, inside the stadium. There's some fantastic stadiums in Germany. Bearing in mind, a lot of these stadiums were upgraded for the 2006 World Cup uh, uh, 18 years ago, and they've stood the test of time. Some of them have had further upgrades since then. So we have some fantastic facilities. Um, the playing surfaces, though, I will say this, some of the playing surfaces are not perfect. Uh, they are looking a bit tired. Some of them are cutting up, um, which I think is also having an impact on the games. Uh, dodgy playing surface, not these green billiard table kind of carpets. We are seeing a bit of patchworkness on some of the playing surfaces. It's been a long season in Germany. A lot of games have been played, and it has rained a lot. It has actually rained a lot the last year, year and a half. So these pitches have had a lot of wear and tear. And um, yeah, we've seen a few a few pitches look a little bit tired so far already. So we, we could see these pitches cut up a little bit with a bit more rain, which will add another dimension into the mix. But so far, it's been a fun tournament. So goals per game, still high. One, one draw, no goalless draws. Eight matches so far with three or more goals. Five matches with three goals as, as the, that is the finishing scoreline. A lot of goals from outside the box. Atmosphere is fantastic. Weather conditions, changeable. Hot, humid, thunderstorms heat a lot of dry days with heat so that's i think also having an impact on the players but there we go that's my thoughts on uefa euro 2024 after the first 12 matches uh, place your thoughts in the comment section below how do you think the tournament's gone so far are you looking forward to the next batch of group stage fixtures which start today and who do you think is going to qualify for the knockout stages because that's going to be very very interesting to see who gets through to the second round uh, which of the third place teams are going to miss out who do you think is going to make that as a, a best third place team through to the next phase that's going to be interesting what changes would you make to the the, the, the system of qualification for the second round because a 24 game a 24 team tournament should i say does have this flaw in it in regards to uh, getting out the group stage and into the knockout stages but from me for now thank you very much for watching please place your thoughts in that comment section below uh, please like and subscribe as well if you like the content and i'll have some more videos for you guys and girls very very soon